Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayek Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is December the 7th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, I trust this finds you feeling happy in Jesus, grateful for the fact that your sins have been forgiven, that you have been washed in the blood that he shed upon Calvary, that you have been filled with his spirit that enables you to live a victorious and sin-free life. For that is the purpose that he came, friends. And it is my prayer that you know that to be true in your souls. Well, we're continuing our study in the book of Romans, and when we last left off in chapter 1, Paul was speaking of the process by which men become reprobates unto God, and it begins by a simple rejection to acknowledge the truth that God exists, and by God existing that there are rules, regulations, and laws that we must surrender to in serving him as our king. And so the choice to no longer serve ourselves, but rather to serve him, the true and living God. And as rejection is their initial step, this opens the door to the floodgates of all the hordes of hell and leads them into all forms of disobedience, darkness, and evil, which eventually leads to the destruction of their souls. And so Paul is very clear in mentioning these different characteristics of darkness that move into the hearts of men between verses 28 to 31. But in verse 32, he says something very interesting. He says, although they know the judgment of God, that those who commit these things are worthy of death, not only those that do these things, but even those who take pleasure in them that do them. Now, if you look up the Greek word for have pleasure, it simply means to agree with. And how we would keep this in context in this verse, moving into chapter 2, verse 1, is although they speak outwardly against these things in public, in secret, in the privacy of their hearts, they agree with these things because they themselves are practitioners of the very same things that they're condemning. And that's why he says in verse 1 of chapter 2, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, Whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemns thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and thy thyself doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? In other words, just because you are speaking against these things doesn't make you right before God. You need to practice what you preach. It's as Jesus stated when he said, get the log out of your own eye, then you can help your brother get the splinter out of his eye. Point the finger at yourself before you point the finger at others. We know from John chapter 7 verse 24 that there is righteous judgment. And in order to judge righteously, we need to make sure that we're not practicing the very same things that we're speaking against. In other words, in modern day vernacular, Paul is simply saying, look, it's easy to talk the talk, but are you walking the walk? Place all your attention upon your relationship with Jesus, your journey day by day. Seek your own salvation with fear and trembling. Quit trying to change the whole world around you when you've done very little to try to change yourself. And so in verse 4 he says, Do you despise the riches of God's goodness, God's forbearance, and God's long suffering? Do you not know that the goodness of God leads thee to repentance? And so rather than focusing on the importance of others repenting, you yourself need to repent before God. Because if you examine your heart closely, there is still much darkness in your heart that needs to be dealt with. But because you are so quick to judge others rather than to judge yourself, in verse 5 he says, Thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath 
and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. You refuse to repent because of the hardness of your heart and the impenitence of your heart. But God will render to every man according to his own deeds, not according to his own beliefs, not according to his own faithfulness in the service to God, by preaching and teaching the word of God, but by your personal acts of obedience unto the things of God. Don't tell others how much they need to pray if you yourself are not praying. Don't tell others how much they need to be reading the Bible if you yourself aren't reading the Bible. Don't tell others how much they need to be performing good deeds toward the less fortunate if you yourself aren't doing those things. And certainly don't tell others how much they need to be living sin-free lives when on the outside you have washed everything clean, but on the inside you are full of dead men's bones. That's what Paul is saying here. And so he says, God will render to every man according to his deeds, to those who by patient continuance in well-doing, in obedience, because they are seeking for glory and honor from their king and immortality, and eternal life. But unto those that are contentious, argumentative, desiring to prove everyone else wrong and themselves right, those who do not obey the truth, but instead they obey unrighteousness, they obey their own lusts, their own desires, their own passions, indignation, and wrath upon these who practice such things, tribulation, and anguish suffering, misery, agony, and pain upon every soul of man that does evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. But, hallelujah, glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to every man who loves the law of God and denies himself, crucifies his flesh, and presses himself, disciplines himself, to be obedient to the things of God, to the Jew first and to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. If you are not from the bloodline of the Hebrew people, yet you are obedient and striving in obedience to the things of God, blessed you will be. If you are from the bloodline of the Hebrew people and you are disobedient to the things of God, cursed you shall be. For God is no respecter of persons. He respects the obedience. He respects the love, the loyalty, the allegiance, not the bloodline. For as many have sinned in verse 12 without the law, which would be the Gentile, shall also perish without the law. And as many have sinned in the law, which would be the Jewish people from the bloodline of Hebrew, they shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God. But the doers of the law shall be justified. Again, faith without works is dead. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature, by instinct, because they know the law of God, it's been written in their hearts, when they do by nature the things contained in the law, although they have not the physical law, they are a law unto themselves." You don't have to teach a man that it's wrong to kill someone. There's something within our hearts, the written law of God, that tells us it's wrong. And the same with all the other laws of God. And so these who have not the law in verse 15 show the work of the law that has been written in their hearts because their conscience bears witness to the law and their thoughts all the while accusing or excusing one another. And this will take place in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men. He will judge the hearts of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. In other words, there are many who live hypocritical lives because they present themselves as one thing before others, but in the privacy of their hearts, they are wicked and they are evil. And they will be judged by Jesus Christ according to the very gospel that I'm presenting to you. And so what Paul is telling us in these verses is that if you think that you have been called into a time of rest, you have foolishly deceived yourself. For we are at a time of war, and our war isn't against the physical things of this earth. It certainly isn't against others. 
Our war is against ourselves. We are our greatest enemy. And we must understand the difference between the person we are in the flesh and the person we are in the spirit. And the person that we are in the spirit has to annihilate and put to death the person that we are in the flesh. And this is a daily struggle that considers every thought, every action, every word, and every motive of our hearts. And so the person that we are in the flesh wants to stand and defy God. The person that we are in the spirit wants to bow low and surrender to God. And we must become people of the spirit. It doesn't matter whether we're from the Jewish bloodline or if we are Gentiles. We have all been called to obedience. And if we, as we are told in verse 9, if we dread tribulation and anguish, if we fear misery and suffering, if we want to escape the judgment that is to come, then we need to remain people with repentant hearts, carefully examining our lives and looking unto the riches in verse 4 of God's goodness looking unto his forbearance and his long suffering, knowing that he is faithful and just to forgive us if we will only confess our sins. And by doing so, the goodness of God will bring us to repentance. Oh, friends, that God would help us to open the doors of our heart, to examine ourselves very closely, and anything we find that does not stand under the scrutinization under his light of glory, that does not bring him honor and praise, that we will confess those things, repent of those things, and we will allow him to sweep our hearts clean so that we may live before him with clean consciences, knowing that we are doing the very best that we can do to be found honorable and favorable, faithful, and sincere before him. Friends, I pray for you every single day that that is your heart's desire, that you will live each day in your relationship with the Most High as if you were the only person on earth, meaning that all your time, all your effort will be directed at yourself and your obedience, your personal relationship with him and you will seek to bring him pleasure each and every moment of your lives. I truly love you, friends. I truly care about your soul. And I pray that this word today has challenged you to become a more faithful follower of the Lord Jesus in each and every moment of your life. Now, as he wills, and until next time, I'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.